This is worksheet one of the moles packet. In this packet, we are going to apply the technique that we learned in the factor label packet, and we are going to use it so that we can calculate uh, relationships between amounts of reactants and amounts of products. And this is going to also lead us into the packet which will come after this. So all of these ideas build off of each other. Um, and the big idea is that if we know the amount of the reactants that we have as we begin a chemical reaction, we can use a step-by-step -step math-based approach to figure out how many products we are going to end up with when the reaction is complete. Uh, you are going to need to have a functioning scientific calculation or calculator in this packet. We're going to use big numbers. Uh, we're going to use factor label method, like I said, and also scientific notation. So you can't forget what we learned in the last packet. That being said, the only new idea being introduced in this packet is the idea of a mole. And it's going to take kind of through worksheet 5 before we finish defining what a mole is. And so for our purposes now, we are just going to say that a mole, along with being a fuzzy little creature and a brown spot on your skin and all of that, um, for chemistry is a quantity of matter, a certain amount of stuff, and it's helpful because we can use it to convert into other measurements of stuff. So uh, one other way that we measure stuff that we might be more familiar with is grams, right? So if we want to know how much stuff weighs, we can talk about how many grams it is. Uh, so in worksheets one and two, we are going to learn how to convert uh, from moles into grams and also vice versa from grams uh, back the other direction into moles. And in order to do that, we need to be able to determine uh, something called a molar mass that's going to be unique to each atom or compound that we talk about. Uh, just a little preview, in worksheets 3 and 4, we're going to learn another definition of a mole, um, which has to do with this big number here, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and that's going to allow us to convert from moles into number of molecules, or vice versa, number of molecules into moles. And then in worksheet 5, we'll learn our final sort of definition or understanding of a mole that has to do with this 22.4 liters, and that's going to allow us to uh, convert from moles into liters and also vice versa from liters back into moles. So if that hasn't totally confused you, <laughs> then we will go on um, to our first task. So our first task is this idea of um, molar mass. That's We're just going to learn in worksheet one how to calculate molar mass and then in worksheet two we'll use that calculation. Uh, so a molar mass tells us the weight of one mole, one sort of unit or amount of quantity of an atom or a compound. And uh, we're going to need to have a periodic table out in front of us in order to do these calculations, so make sure that you have one handy. There's one in the front of this packet. Um, and we'll start with a really simple example first. If we want to calculate the molar mass of iodine, right? remember iodine is one of our diatomic molecules or a Hofbrinkel molecule, uh, so its formula is I2, right? and that means that we have in a molecule of iodine two iodine atoms. So if we look up iodine on the periodic table, we can find its atomic 
mass, the larger number in its square, which is 126.9. So that's how much one atom of iodine weighs. Um, but we need to multiply by 2 because we have two atoms of iodine here. So when we do that, we get our answer, and we'll round to two decimal places just to simplify things. We get 253.8 grams of iodine per mole. Now, we can write grams I2 slash mol. Really easy, just slap that unit on there. But in order to be able to move on to worksheet 2 next, I want you to actually write out what that really means. What that really means is that 253.80 grams of iodine is equal to one mole of iodine. In other words, if I walked up to you and said, here, I'm handing you one mole, one unit or one quantity of iodine, and you put that one mole of iodine onto a scale or a balance, uh, that scale or that balance would read 253.8 grams. So that's how much it weighs. Okay, now that doesn't mean that any atom or molecule is going to weigh that much. Um, that's only if you have iodine. So let's look at a more um, complex compound here. In our next example, we're calculating the molar mass of aluminum sulfate. So this is a little trickier uh, because we've got a lot of different atoms, types of atoms. We've got aluminum, sulfur, and oxygen. And we have all these different subscripts. So we need to think back to what we learned in Chem A about what all these subscripts mean. So um, the first part is maybe a little bit less complicated here. We've got two aluminums because there's that subscript 2 attached to the Al. All right, so two aluminums. Um, but then we got to think about what this SO four in parentheses and then a three outside of it means. So remember that this is kind of like um, when you are in math class and uh, the three outside the parentheses is going to be distributed amongst everything inside of the parentheses. In other words, this three applies to the sulfur, but it also applies to the oxygen. All right, now the four that's inside the parentheses, since it's inside, only applies to what it's directly attached to, right? And sulfur has no subscript, so we can assume it's one, and, and we can write that in there if we want. So this three that we're distributing is going to get multiplied by the little subscripts inside the parentheses, which means three times the one attached to the sulfur, we have three sulfurs. Right, And then 3 gets multiplied by the 4 that's attached to the oxygen. So 3 times 4, we have 12 oxygens. So we've got a lot of atoms here. And so this aluminum sulfate, it's going to be heavier than the iodine in the last example. Uh, same sort of process as with the iodine, just a couple more times around because we've got more atoms this time. So... Uh, if you look up aluminum on the periodic table, it weighs 26.98 grams. Um, and so we're going to have to multiply that by 2 because there's two of them. So we get uh, 53.96. Then if you look up sulfur, it weighs 32.07. We multiply that by 3 because there's three of them, and we get the 64.14. Um, and then there are 12 oxygens. Each oxygen, if we look it up, weighs exactly 16, so that gives us 192. And then we are going to add all of these things, these three numbers, together. So the 53.96 plus the 64.14 plus the 192. And that gives us a final answer of 310.1 grams, 
Al2SO4 3 slash mole. And again, so that you're ready when we get to worksheet two, I want you to write out, actually write down in your paper what this really means. This really means that 310.10 grams of the aluminum sulfate is equal to one mole of aluminum sulfate. So if somebody said, all right, I'll make you a deal. I'll either give you one mole of aluminum sulfate or I will give you 310.1 grams of aluminum sulfate. You could tell that person that you don't care which they give you because they are exactly equal. All right? Okay. So make sure that you have this written down. Uh, because I'm going to erase it in a minute, and we're going to go through an example that for you is on the next page. All right, so I'm going to erase this because I'm going to make some room on this slide, and I'm going to write it right onto this slide. But you need to get a sheet of paper out, and you need to label it Worksheet 1. <laughs> Okay, so you're labeling it worksheet one, and we are going to go all the way down to problem three, because problems one and two, I think you can get on your own, and you'll do those uh, next time you're in class. Uh, but problem three is copper sulfate, CuSO4. This is the first one that stumps people. Um, so let's see if we can work through this together, right? If we want to calculate how much this weighs, a lot of people are going to look at this and say, okay, copper. I can look up copper. There's no subscript, so I assume it to be one, right? So my one copper is going to weigh 63.55 grams, right? I get that off of my periodic table. Easy enough, okay? But then the problem they run into is they say, ah, next I have sulfate. I recognize that. That's a polyatomic ion. And they go looking up SO4 on the periodic table, and they don't find it. And then they look on their list of polyatomic ions, and they find SO4, but it doesn't say how much it weighs. And I'm really glad in a way that that happens, because it means that I've taught you to think of SO4, polyatomic ion as a unit. But the truth is, when it comes to figuring out its molar mass, you have to break it apart into its individual atoms. So you need momentarily to think of this as one sulfur that weighs 32.07 grams and four oxygens, right? Because since there's no parentheses, that four just applies to the atom it is attached to the oxygen. And so four oxygens each weigh, if you look it up, 16, right? So if you do your multiplication, your four times 16, right, that's going to give you 64. Then what you need to add up is the 63.55, the weight of the one copper, the 32.07, the weight of the one sulfur, and the 64, which is the weight of the four oxygens. And you add those all together, and you should get 159.62 grams of CuSO4 per mole. Right, so that is how much one mole of copper sulfate weighs. It's my final answer, so I will put a box around it. All right, so there's a lot more problems on worksheet number one, and we will take a look at those when you get to class.